Welcome to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right, everyone. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor. And we're going to do the review for 1121 for NXT. Uh, and they're getting ready for deadline uh, coming up is their big PPV <laughs> premium pay-per-view. Uh, so that's coming up. So uh, in two championship matches tonight, uh, and they're going to start off with uh, the Heritage Cup Challenge. And, uh, you know, I have been kind of hard on this, you know, this particular uh, cup uh, you know, haven't really liked it, but tonight we got the match that, uh, that this was kind of set up to make look good. Chad Gable going against Noam Dar. Uh, you've got metaphor out there. You've got, uh, Chad's group out there. They, so, uh, you've got the group outside <laughs> to get involved in this every angle that you could ask for. So, uh, but pretty much this was a fan fantastic match i don't think you can have a bad match with chad gable um i just i mean the guy is just that freaking good and uh and he he does his character he does everything but in between those ropes that guy is unbelievable uh and noam dar uh did really really good now he's been showing me a little bit in the last few weeks but i've got to say this week was his best week and of course it would be with chad gable and they can't let chad look bad in this because they're doing such a good push with him anyway so uh bam you're gonna have a a banger match as they say and uh this thing just uh, it goes all the way through to six rounds uh which they never do they said they had never done it on american soil uh but uh each round let me see you had a draw the first round okay the second round uh noam dar wins when mensa does uh, gets involved a little bit gets a punch on him and bam uh noam wins that one then you got to draw the third uh and, and there's some good moves man chad just every time i see him he pulls something else out of his bag of tricks man and he just looked fantastic uh so pretty much a draw let me see uh what was it chad wins the fifth round and then there's a uh, he gets him in a ankle lock in the sixth round and of course their timing was perfect the angle was perfect on this he taps one second after the bell rings. So the draw goes to the champion. <clears throat> but man, what a good match. Definitely a go back and watch match. Um, just everything about it. Everything about it. And then they save the comical stuff until after the match. You know, everybody gets involved. Uh, Lash uh, pushes uh, you want the lady. I mean, it just goes back and forth where they're playing that angle with Otis and Lash Legend. And uh, she did great when acting disgusted. And Otis did really good acting disgusting. So, <laughs> all in all, it was pretty freaking good. Uh, all right. They go uh, from there to JBL. Uh, getting ready for this uh, Iron Survivor Challenge. Uh, you know, each uh, week, uh, a celebrity, a legend, a uh, celebrity, <laughs> but a legend has picked, and this week it's JBL. And uh, he picks uh, an interesting <clears throat> men's match, uh, Mello and uh, Josh Briggs. <laughs> now, I had would not have thought Josh Briggs. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be one of the matches. And then Blair Davenport and Thea Hale. 
uh, in the uh, next match. Uh, so, yeah, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, so next week it's Lawler, uh, so a little Memphis feel next week. Uh, but then I noticed something when they were going to the commercial, uh, going through, uh, that uh, WWE has tied in with the Big 12 Conference. And I thought that was kind of interesting. They've got a belt, and they're going to be there for the championship. <clears throat> and I know NBC has the uh, the rights to the Big 12, So, and they also have, of course, WWE. So I just thought that was kind of interesting uh, that they're doing it that way. So, uh, And then they go into a promo that they do another segment for later, too. But uh, it's Tony D and Stax. And, uh, you know, they're having the big uh, 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 chase for, you know, the belts uh, there to get the belts back, which they got. So they're having like a championship um, celebration party. And they're going to their favorite Italian restaurant. And, of course, they go through the kitchen, you know, like every celebrity, which I've brought a lot of guys over the years through the kitchen. Uh, so, you know, that's not that's real, real uh, realistic, and they do a good job of it. So they go back. And they've got a party. They've got uh, uh, Bada Boom and Bada Bing and all the guys there. Uh, and they go back and have a sit down, and they're going to have a little celebration. It's like a little surprise party for Stax and uh, Tony D. And they pull it off really good. Of course, the WWE, their, um, their production work is just freaking awesome anyway. So, But, yeah, they go in, and uh, they're celebrating and doing everything. But Tony brings up, hey, I want to eat. So they bust out the pasta and they go to it. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, after that, you've got Mellow and Trick uh, doing a little spot, a little promo. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you had uh, Trick saying that he would be out there for Mellow. But Mellow's saying, eh, you know, I got to do this solo got to do it solo so yes they're setting that uh, it's still that angle that they're setting up between trick and mellow it's got to happen so they uh come back from a commercial break and they're going to have the zion lee uh uh, valkyra lara valkyra match and as the champs coming out first which i thought was a little odd and uh of course there was a reason (laughs) they're gonna uh, Miss Lee is going to jump her and uh, lay her out. Uh, and, man, these, these two ladies do such a good job. They worked so good together. So uh, Zaya comes out, jumps her from behind, and, uh, of course, uh, they have to stop and take her back to the trainer and see if she is uh, medically cleared, I guess you would say, for the match. So they have to kind of move the card around. So they end up... Uh, having a match between Anofi and Blade and Garza and Corolla. And, uh, uh, it's, you know, this, these guys, Blade and Anofi, they, they are such high flyers and they always look good and they look good in this match. Um, and this wasn't, it was a setup match, uh, for the, for the Garza and Corolla, but, uh, it, um, it was, uh, it should have been like a squash match and they did not make it look that way. Uh, if they did though, the guards and the guys, they, they did the old typical old school though. They kept, uh, uh it, I believe it was blade away from an and they really worked on him for the most of the match. And then, uh, of course he gets in, does some great moves, but then <laughs> Garza and Corella, they just, they work so good together. Their timing, uh, their moves they were putting together are just, just unbelievable uh, the way they set one sets uh, uh, the guy the opponent up and then the other one gets to do some good high flying great move and, and of course they end up getting the win in this because they're saying that they they want to go for the gold so they're giving them the push now and uh, I think they'll do good with this push um, you know it, it just all the, all around this looks like it's going to be a good setup on down the road. I mean, these guys are second generation, I believe possibly third generation guys. So, uh, but yeah, they, uh, Garz and Corella get the, uh, big win. Uh, and then of course they've got, uh, Lyra in the, um, 
uh, in the trainer's room. They do a couple little spots there of her seeing uh, while well, she's getting taken care of there. And then uh, then you're going to have Briggs doing the same thing that Mello did, telling uh, Jensen and Valen that, uh, hey, I'm going to do this solo, I'm going out there by myself. Uh, and then uh, after that, they go into the Iron Match. Uh, the Iron Challenge match or Match Challenge, whatever you want to put it. But uh, you got big Josh Briggs going against Carmelo. And I did not realize how big Briggs was until he was in the ring with Melo. He was so much bigger. It was, oh, it was. And now Melo does all the small things. He's so smooth that he can pull off and make it look good. And he did. Uh, and it looked like at one point he was going to turn the match around this way. But, I mean, look, uh, uh, <laughs> Big Josh uh, threw an elbow once to, to Mello's head. Mello's head was completely blocked. You could not see his head. That's how big his elbow was. Now, Josh needs work. He is not all the way there yet. But maybe they're getting him more ring time uh, or whatever like it because he's got to look. Uh, and he, he's more, he's slow. He doesn't rush his moves. He's got, he's almost there, almost there. He needs a little bit better, uh, like, like his strikers punch. He needs to, I think, work on that. I mean, you know, it's easy to Monday morning quarterback. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, this was a good match. And then at one point, (laughs) Mello slaps him while they're out in front of the announcer's desk. And he throws Mello into the ropes, and Mello bounces off, and then he gives him a little clothesline. Looked really, really good. And this match is good. Uh, I mean, uh, Mello does a scissor kick, Booker T's signature move. And then, of course, Booker T gets to kind of critique it and uh, says he didn't get enough scissor in it, I guess. (laughs) But... uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, uh, 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 Briggs did like a uh, JBL clothesline in the match, so they both did uh, a little, you know, good little moves. But then Mello's going, you know, looks like he's going to turn the match around, and then you got to have an angle. <laughs> you got to have something in there. And who is it other than Lexus King? Uh, comes and does a run in and uh, gets, uh, you know, something, something upside the head. But, of course, that opens the window for Josh, and he does a big clothesline. Uh, but then he does a moonsault off of the top rope for the win. I mean, uh, you know, he's heading to deadline now. So he is in the uh, finals, I believe. Uh, or, no, not the finals. He'll be in the challenge, though, uh, at deadline. Uh, so, yeah. And, and then, of course, you got to go back to Lyra. And uh, she's uh, saying that she's not going to call the match off. She is not going to let her win like that. Uh, and then they do a quick, uh, but a very cool uh, little promo with uh, Von Wagner heading over to Mr. Stone's house to have a little dinner with the wife and kids. And apparently, uh, you know, I don't know if these are his kids. I don't know if it's his wife. But however, now they had some twin boys on there with ponytails like they're father i'm sure they were actors uh but still uh it was good it was good they of course uncle vaughn is like the big oaf that's or the big giant that uh uh is like uh he's saying he doesn't like his vegetables all meat of course they have to tell him that hey the kids have to have their vegetables and he keeps going like oh yeah oh yeah and then uh the boys mention a bully at school and of course he's gonna take care of that and you know just little things like it but it good Good little, uh, good little promo. He brought some uh, brownies, but he ate a few on the way. It's just, and of course, they had to bring the scar into it. So the boys see a scar, and they correct him. And uh, yeah, so they had a little of everything in this uh, promo. So yeah, good little spot. I kind of liked it. They're you know they're kind of doing something with this uh, with this run with Vaughn. So I'm happy. Yeah, but after uh, Von uh, and uh, Von Wagner and Mr. Stone spot, uh, they got Wesley coming out, and they give him a little time with the stick. And uh, of course, he just had that bad match with Baron. He's been off a little bit, but Dominic 
uh, Mysterio came out and caused a problem, so he is going after the North American belt. And he calls out Dom. And uh, Dom comes out there, and uh, he even he does he's getting better on the mic. He's he just because he grew up in a ring. Of course, he's going to have that side of ever everything worked out. But I think at one time he, it looked like he even forgot that uh, Dom did forgot one of his lines, and uh, he covered it up good. So I mean, good little spot. They're setting it up. Uh, let me see. Uh, and then, and then they do chase you, and they do like a. Um, I don't know, like a TMC um, expose of, uh, you know, what has happened that Chase apparently is, Andre has apparently gotten in gambling debt or something, and uh, maybe he threw the matches. They're just all kinds. They're setting up all kinds of angles with that, you know, with J.C. Jane getting a little insight into things. So good little plot, and they're thickening it this week uh, or whatever. And then, of course, they you know, it goes to a little spot with Thea and J.C., uh, JC Jane and uh, she's saying that uh, JC is that uh, the Duke and uh, Andre can't be there this week and she understands and uh, but to that uh, she's got Thea's back and that she'll go out to the ring with her and uh, and uh, be her uh, you know her her guide or her 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 uh, backup there uh, so yeah um, they got to a, a little spot then with Josh Briggs. And for, for some reason, they brought Tiff into it, Tiff Tiff. And she comes in, and, of course, uh, Jensen and Valen pop in and uh, right as she's leaving. And so maybe they're setting up uh, something there. And we'll see. You know, that's for sure. But uh, they go into the match with Blair Davenport and Thea Hale uh, with J.C. Jane on the outside. Um, and uh, they... They come out to uh, uh, to chase you's music, and right when they come out, JC's like, yeah, yeah, and she changes it up to some kind of rock beat. So uh, it was kind of funny. And uh, when they, of course, she goes into a dancing mode, and uh, Blair Davenport's in the ring like she's disgusted. Uh, so good little look and everything. Uh, but I gotta say that. Uh, old school when you say old school in the women's division i have to give it to blair davenport because she really has that old school feel uh like she was trained really good by someone and she took what they uh uh you know gave her in this because this is an iron uh you know an iron uh, uh challenge match there so uh the match is pretty good uh you know both of them sell and thea had to sell a lot in this one uh you know but uh uh, the match was pretty good, you know, but look, we, Blair got uh, a kick or off the top rope on at one time when Thea was holding on to the rope and, uh, that looked really good. Uh, and, um, <laughs> so she stays on that body part, you know, kind of like an old Arnd Anderson or somebody like that would have done back in the day, a Dory Funk or something. Um, you know, it, it just looked good and the match was pretty good. Uh, you know, but, um, and, and she, Blair, of course, is going to get into, into it with JC at one time. And I thought that was going to be the angle, but it wasn't, um, it comes to find that, uh, Thea does her little ultimate warrior, uh, grabbing the rope, you know, and, and shaking it. <clears throat> and when she does that, that gives uh, Blair a chance and Blair jumps on it and ends up winning the match, uh, with the, uh, the uh, disgust of the student section too. So <laughs> it's just uh, old school. Uh, won this one right here. So good little spot. Good little spot. Um, you know, pretty good match. Uh, you know. So let me see. Where do we go from there? Ah, uh, yeah. They do a spot, a little promo with Baron Corbin, and it is very nice. I like this little spot. They uh, Baron uh, narrates it, I guess you would say, and. Uh, Really does a good spot of uh, kind of showing how Dragunov, uh has to. Uh, he's you know he's from I believe it was Germany or wherever it was, um, and he's away from his family and he goes home to a lonely apartment and da 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 da. Uh, and then of course there's Baron. It's living the lifestyle, generational wealth, my friends, uh, and and how it's easier for him. And he he even quoted Dragunov. Saying that uh, the only person that can kill the dragon is the dragon, 
And uh, so, bam, there we go. Baron and a par- is apparently a dragon. <laughs> so he's he's gonna win the match, folks. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let me see. And then you're going to have um, uh, after that you're going to have uh, Charlie Dempsey uh, going up against Eddie Thorpe. And uh, I like Eddie Thorpe, but I gotta say in this match, and and of course Gulak and and Bourne are out there with uh with Charlie, but uh, Charlie, another old school. Uh, I even wrote down on my notes that he looks exactly like uh, Stephen Regal uh, did in the ring when when Stephen Regal used to wrestle. I mean, he came through Memphis. I saw him uh, at the start of his pill days, uh, but. Uh, he looked that old uh, uh, English uh, grappling style, and man, uh, he he just stretched uh, <laughs> Eddie Thorpe pretty much this whole match, and he was doing the old school like a, like I did in school myself. You'd you'd have that one knuckle out of your fist, and when he was stretching him, he was driving that into his ribs, and he stayed on that body part on the ribs. Stretch, 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 uh, you know, and Gulak's running his mouth on the outside. And it just looks like he's going to just, uh, just this might be a squash match. Uh, but no, <laughs> but no, Eddie Thorpe <clears throat> is going to end up winning this match uh, with a roll up. And, uh, you know, it looked pretty good. It looked pretty good. But uh, it's the way he gets jumped afterwards because it's three on one. And they whooped the tar out of him. So it's kind of like uh, he won the battle but lost the war. Uh, but then you go back to Tony D and Stax, and they're still eating. But, uh, you know, they eventually get through eating. And uh, and it, uh, it's an old tradition uh, to where, like, when somebody would get out of jail or somebody gets married, uh, that a lot of the guys would would put some cash in an envelope and and give it to the bride or groom or to the person who just uh, you know for whatever reason is being celebrated, and so they do that. It's like all the guys from the f- other families or the other section of the family are, are doing their payday, their drop off. So everybody's dropping that envelope off. So uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty fat, and you know everybody's doing good. I like the angle. I like everything with this. So, of course, they're going to go somewhere else and, and party now. Uh, they even ask if they want to wrap up some some st- food to go. I love it. I just love it. Uh, so they go through the kitchen like the, you know, like the gangsters they are. And, you know, they're getting ready to leave. And then, bam! <laughs> You've got Garza and Corolla. They show up and whoop the tar out of them. And then jump in a really nice Jeep and take off. Uh, and I like this. They, of course, Tony D jumps up and he's like, you got the match. You got it. So we have an upcoming, uh, um, you know, good match upcoming with that. Uh, so, yeah. And then they do a little spot with Ariana Grace. Uh, and she's talking about Karen uh, Popovich, or I believe is the name. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she said she stinks. She needs to take a bath with some soap. And that uh, apparently they will be having a match uh, next week. And, of course, like I said earlier, Lawler is going to do the uh, – Jerry is going to do the uh, Iron Man Challenge uh, – or the – not Iron Man, but the Iron Challenge uh, matches next week. Uh, but, they, wow. But then uh, we're right there with the Zia Lee. Lara Vakura uh, match. And, uh, of course, when they start this up, uh, Lara just comes out. She's ticked. And, of course, she comes out, and they get to work. And, man, when I say get to work, these ladies went to town. Both of these ladies can sell. Both of them have good offense. Lara end up taking the grunt of most of the match. And uh, Zaya just put it on her. I mean, just looked really good. Her moves were crisp. Their timing together was good. Just a good, good match. Another go back and watch match. So, uh, I mean, both of these uh, ladies really look good. Uh, and Laura at one time takes a spill. Uh, I think she gets thrown into the 
turnbuckle and uh, she throws that head back. Of course, she got hit in the head earlier in the night. So uh, there's that angle <laughs> playing in. Uh, but man, uh, it just looked really, really good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about it. So it was, she didn't want to be, Lyra didn't want to be the, uh, shortest live champ. This was her first defense. So, uh, it looked like Zaya was going to win this match, but no, uh, you know, uh, it was a good win, uh, for Lyra and, uh, I can't say enough. I just go back and watch this, uh, definitely. So for the last match, I think if you're going to give somebody that time slot, uh, that means they expect a lot and they got it. So a good, good deal on this one this week. So, uh, we'll have to see what's coming in the writing, uh, on down the road for show. Uh, so overall though, good show. Um, I, I like everything. I, I, I did bring up the uh, Big 12. You know, they're kind of doing what they're doing over there with that. So we'll see how that goes in the future for sure. But I guess let me check these notes here. I believe I got everything. Uh, so, yeah, good matches. Go, go back and watch it. Uh, and, guys, uh, I guess that's going to be it. Yep. That is everything uh, from the show this week. Uh, so we will see how it goes. I'm watching uh, our NXT uh, crew that has gone up to the main roster. Everybody looks like they're getting, uh, uh, you know, good time and everything. So we will see how everybody goes. Uh, they threw out a challenge and Wesley did, uh, Dom did earlier that he had to go through, uh, like a gauntlet type, uh, situation. Then they let us uh, know who was going to be in that gauntlet. Now I didn't write that down, but I know it was, uh, if I remember right, it was Grayson. I mean, not Grayson, but, uh, you got Johnny, uh, the all ex champs, you got big Bronsons. They're bringing big Bronson in on this. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's three of them. I can't remember all of them. But anyway, it's going to be a good match upcoming. Uh, but they've got to have a match for the North American title. So that'll probably uh, – Wesley will pull that off. But we'll have to see how it looks. That's for sure. Uh, but, all right, guys, I guess I will shut this down. Uh, I did want to say I'd been asked by a couple people uh, – memphis mark og on uh x and on youtube where i'm going to start throwing some stuff up on youtube a little bit of taping some of the show just to see uh you know if anybody likes it we might do something like that in the future hm, you know never can tell uh but all right guys i guess we will close it out here uh we'll close it the way we always do with uh, uh thank you very much for taking the time out and listening uh if you can get out and help a shelter do what you can for uh the pets out there and of course spay and neuter and uh yeah so all right guys this is memphis mark and uh you know what <laughs> i'm out Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash wwepodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.